Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless God once again for yet another day that God has given us to be uh, in this platform where we share the word of the Lord. We encourage each other, but I would like us to start with a word of prayer as we begin our service. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I would like to thank you. I would like to bless your wonderful name for yet another day, yet another opportunity that you have given us, dear Father, to come before your throne, dear God, to hear what you have prepared for us, and even, Father, to feed on that table of love, O oh God Almighty. I pray that, God Almighty, you would use me, my God, as a vessel in thine hand, dear Lord, to minister to your people, O oh God Almighty, to them that are weak, to them that are weary, that, Jehovah God, they be strengthened by your word, O oh God of heaven. I thank you, and I bless your holy name. Be in our beginning and even Father, as even we end, O God of heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We bless God for yet another day that God has given us. It is a blessing, it is an honor that the Almighty God has given us to uh, share the word of the Lord, to share uh, this truth uh, that is able to encourage us, that is able to strengthen the feeble knees and uh, to them of us that are almost giving us up, uh, that the hand of the Lord and the word of the Lord will uphold us. And I'm so grateful that God has given us a chance once again to come to you uh, with this word, not with excellence of speech, nor, nor even men's knowledge or wisdom, but it is the demonstration, Paul talking to the church in Corinth, the demonstration of the spirit and the power of God. And I'm so grateful that God has continually helped us, God has continually given us his word in season. And I want to bless God. We were not too long ago talking about uh, the book of uh, Malachi, and I feel I want to read again the book of Malachi, uh, because the book of Malachi being the last prophet that prophesied uh, before the return of, or rather before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Old Testament we see, uh, which is being closed by prophet Malachi, it is closing with a warning. And God's people are being warned by Malachi because they had just come from Babylon and the zeal and the excitement and the love of God had dwindled as it were. Uh, they had uh, given themselves to, uh, you know, lethargy and uh, there, is no, there was no that zeal and the excitement in serving the Lord. And for that, a man of God by the name of Malachi, a prophet, uh, was called of God to warn God's people in the book of Malachi, the fourth chapter. And verse number one, the Bible says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an orphan. This is uh, the warning of, uh, of uh, God to his people uh, through Malachi. This man was the last prophet. Uh, talking and ministering to God's people, prophesying to God's people. Immediately they came from Babylon and they had uh, 
compromised a lot of things. They had forsaken uh, the work of the Lord. They had even not honored the Lord the way they were supposed to honor the Lord. The ministers and the priests had neglected their offices. And even they had stopped giving their tithes and their offerings. Uh, but the Bible is saying now towards the end, uh, he warned them that it has to be uh, because the closing of first no chapter, th chapter, chapter 3, the Bible is saying, first number 17, uh, the Bible is saying, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when, when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him, first number 18. He says, then shall you return. Now that is how he closes uh, chapter 13. Uh, then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. So he is closing uh, by telling God's people, by warning them that a time will come where there will be going to be, everything will be manifested, and the difference between the righteous and the wicked will be clearly be seen, and between the him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So he said a time will come and this will be revealed. Uh, so people, he said, you can continue the way you want. If you don't want to honor God, if you don't want to uh, serve God as a minister of the gospel and do that which is right, and if you don't want to give your tithes and your offerings, then he said you can leave it, but a time will come, this is God, then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked and between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So he said, let's give things time. Because it is coming to an end where everything will be made manifest. Everything will be uh, put in the open and everybody will get to see and will get to know who was serving God in sincerity and in truth and who was not. That is why now opening chapter 4, 14, chapter four verse number 1, he said, Behold, now this is what he is saying, Behold, after closing chapter, 13, chapter 3, he said, Behold, the day cometh that, sh that, that shall burn as an orphan. This is now his warning. It is a warning. It was a pronunciation of God's judgment. It was a pronunciation where everything will be put to the open and the Bible says, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And they that cometh shall, uh, shall burn them up. In the day, and the day that cometh shall burn them up. Now this is what he is saying. And I believe he is uh, putting emphasis on what prophet Daniel was talking about in the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter and verse number 1. The Bible says, And at that time shall Michael stand up the great priest, and that which standeth for the children of the, thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. That is the thing. A time of trouble. Malachi is saying, A day that will burn like often. But Daniel is saying it's a day of trouble. He said, and such as, has, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that the same time. In other words, this is the warning. God's people are being warned. You can continue. I remember Malachi is closing the Old Testament. You can continue with whatever you want to continue, lifestyle, whatever conversation you want, whether you want to serve God or you don't want to serve God. But a time will come and everybody will discern him that is wicked and the him that has been righteous. He that have been serving God and he that have not been serving God. And it will be a day of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. The people of God. That is the certainty. That is the truth. That God's people will be spared. God's people will be delivered. And verse number two, the Bible is saying, uh, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting condemnation. This is now what will make the, 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 the difference. Uh, the righteous are going to be triumph. The righteous are going to be rewarded. But the wicked are going to be condemned, and they are going to be judged and destroyed. Again, in the book of John, the fifth chapter, there's a first of scripture, but I won't lie there. It's John, the fifth chapter, and verse number 28. The Bible is saying, Now marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in their graves shall bear, shall hear 
his voice. This is the same thing that Daniel is talking about. Uh, the final judgment. Uh, when everybody will be uh, judged. Uh, them that have served God, they are going to be rewarded. And the wicked are going to be utterly destroyed. And this is Jesus speaking. And he said, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, verse 29, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. If we have done good, so we don't have to condemn and judge people now. Malachi is saying, we'll wait. Jesus is saying, we'll wait. Then um, Daniel is saying, there's going to be a day of trouble, a day uh, that is going to be a day of trouble that will burn like an orphan. And them that have served God, the righteous, and the Bible is saying, and shall come for they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of of damna damnation. So you'll find uh, this is what now the Bible is saying. Malachi is closing. Back to the book of Malachi. He is closing on that. Uh, verse number two. The Bible is saying, but unto you. Now look at here. He is talking now to the people that fear God. To the people that have served him. To the people that look forward uh, for him. And uh, for the manifestation of, of, uh, of the kingdom of God. But unto you that fear, my name shall the son of righteousness. That is Jesus Christ. Allies with the healing in his wings. So the son of righteousness is Jesus Christ. And he is going to arise. He is going to come to them uh, that are, have served God. That have lived for God. Them that have, uh, have uh, uphold or upheld the truth. So he said, for you that have feared God, and that is why a child of God should not fear of what the enemy is saying, they should fear God. They should look forward uh, to do that which is righteous, to do that which is good uh, before the Lord. Because Jesus is coming, even for you, Allah that is listening to me, I want to tell you, Jesus will visit you when you continue serving God in sincerity and in truth. But, uh, but unto you, that fear my name shall the son of righteousness. And Jesus is a son of righteousness because in him dwelleth the fullness of Godhead bodily. In other words, all things, all the righteousness, the perfection of God. Colossians, the first chapter and first number 19. Everything that is of God, that is everything that you can use to explain God. Uh, Jesus has it. And we know the Bible says God is light. So Jesus is the express image of God. And the Bible is calling him the son of righteousness. For it preached God, that is Colossians, the first chapter and first number 19. For it preached to the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. That means every perfection, every holiness dwells in him, it dwells in Christ. And when there is that holiness and that perfection in Christ, then he, 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 gives, he gives glory, he gives light, he, gives, he, he, he enlightens our lives. And them that have been in darkness, them that have been, again I think Colossians, the second chapter and verse number nine, almost the same statement, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And the Bible says bodily. That means it is Leo. It is not a type. It is Leo. The fullness of Godhead dwelled in the body of Jesus Christ. So that when you saw Jesus Christ, when you have Jesus Christ, it is equated with the sun that is lighting and is arising in a dark night. And early in the morning, when the sun starts coming, then the darkness is, uh, is, uh, it frees away. It rolls away. Uh, why? Because there's a greater light that has come. And the people that has, uh, has, uh, has stayed in the region, the Bible is saying them that have been in the region of darkness, great light have sprung up. Them that have stayed in the region of darkness, in other words, they had stayed without fearing God. They have stayed uh, without, uh, without uh, uh, having the fear of God. And they were, you know, when you don't have the knowledge of God, it is equated with an individual that is in darkness. When you don't have the truth, when you don't have, when you have ignorance, 
Uh, oh, what you have is ignorance. Then the Bible is saying, when then the knowledge of God comes, uh, when the uh, Christ comes, uh, then he becomes the light that enli enlightens the world. Praise the name of the Lord. He becomes the light that enlightens uh, the world. Jesus becomes in the book of John. Uh, John, uh, maybe I'll before I go to Matthew, the fourth chapter, then the book of John, the eighth chapter, and verse number 12, the Bible says, then spake Jesus again unto them, and saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. And here, Jesus is coming as the light of the world, both to the Jews and also to the Gentiles. Uh, because the Jews were in darkness when they were coming out of uh, uh, Babylon. They had forgotten, as it were, uh, the word of God. They had forgotten the law of Moses. They had forgotten uh, what God covenantal relationship he had with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that is why now Jesus coming, he is coming as the light, the son of righteousness. In other words, uh, he is saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In other, in other words, what we are saying, Jesus is saying, if you follow, then you walk in the light. But if you don't follow Christ, then you are walking in darkness. Matthew, the fourth chapter, and verse number 16, the Bible is saying, the people which sat in darkness so great light. These people, both the Jews and the Gentiles, before the coming of Christ, it is as the desert were, all of us, we were staying in darkness. We were walking in darkness. The people which sat in darkness, and he is borrowing these. I believe it is. He is borrowing these from prophet Isaiah in the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter and verse number two. The Bible is saying the people that walked in darkness. Isaiah is saying walked. But Jesus is saying them that sat in darkness. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Praise the name of the Lord. They have seen and they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Because when you are in darkness it means you are not aware of your surrounding. You are equated with an individual that is physically dead. A man that is physically dead, it means that then they can't be aware of what is around them. And they cannot be aware of the environment. They cannot find their way around because they are in darkness. The darkness of death. But also in knowledge, when a man doesn't know God, when an individual doesn't have this knowledge of the word of God, then they are in darkness. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, both the Jews and the Gentiles. So that is why Monica is saying, and you that I have known, uh, have, though you that I have feared the Lord, but you that I have feared my name shall the son of righteousness arise. Praise the name of the Lord. And Jesus coming was for the Jews and also was for the Gentiles. He was not only uh, coming for the Jews, but he was also coming uh, for the Gentiles. In the book of, uh, uh, in the book of Luke, I uh, want to first scripture in the book of Luke, the, 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 the second chapter and verse number 32, uh, the Bible is saying, a light to lighten the Gentiles. And the glory of thy people Israel. Now look at that. When Jesus is coming, or when Jesus came, he came as a light to the Gentiles, to lighten the Gentiles, and he was the glory of the people Israel, the people of God. So the coming of Jesus Christ, he came at a time when the whole world was covered in darkness, the whole world was covered in darkness. It needed the light. It needed because everybody, both the Gentiles, they had forgotten. The Jews had forgotten the law of Moses. I think there's a first of scripture in the book of Malachi that where we are leading. The Bible is saying, verse number four, chapter four, verse number four, he saying, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Because they had forgotten. When they were coming out of Babylon, they were like the people that were in darkness. They had forgotten the covenantal relationship and 
blessings that God had pronounced and given to Moses. So they, God now through Malachi say, I want you to remember. And the Gentiles also, they were also grooming in darkness. They also needed the light. So Jesus coming was for both the Gentiles and also the Jews. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and they, they all, all needed to hear this gospel. They all needed to hear this truth. They all needed to hear the word of the Lord because they were in utter darkness. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, so the Bible is saying he, he, was, he came uh, for both of the Gentiles and also uh, the Jews. Uh, so for the Jews, I think it's a first of scripture in, uh, in, uh, in Isaiah the 60th chapter and verse number 1. This is for the Jews. Again, the Bible is saying, and also the Gentiles. Our lies shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is listened upon thee. That is now a statement given uh, by prophet Isaiah. Our lies are child of God now. Them that were seated. Remember, we are coming from Isaiah the ninth uh, chapter and verse number 2. They were walking in darkness, and Jesus said in Matthew 4, 16, they, was, they had sat and the people which sat in darkness saw great light. Now when they see Isaiah is saying, Arise, they are no longer going to sit now. In Isaiah the 60th chapter and verse number 1, it is, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Praise the name of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee, upon the people, upon the world. He is, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So everybody then now when they receive Jesus Christ, the son of righteousness, then they are no longer going to walk in darkness or sit in darkness, but they will arise. Hallelujah. Because now they have the knowledge. Uh, they have the, the understanding. They now remember. The Jews uh, are remembering the covenantal relationship with Abraham. They are remembering the law of Moses. And the Gentiles are receiving the gospel. They are receiving the preaching of a gospel. So the two groups of people, both the Jews and the Gentiles, have, re have received the light. And now what they do, they are lies. For thy light is come. And that is what a child of God should do. We as Gentiles, and we are supposed to arise when we receive the gospel because it illuminates our way. We are no longer walking in darkness and we are no longer sitting in darkness. First number two, the Bible is saying, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth without Christ and gross darkness the people. But the Lord, hallelujah, shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. The glory shall be seen upon the children of Israel, shall be seen upon the Israelites. The glory of God shall be seen upon the Israelites. But first number, that, first number three, the Bible is saying, and the Gentiles. Now look at the two. Hallelujah. The, the Gentiles, but the Gentiles. So you'll find Jesus came for the two groups. Jesus came for the two groups that were in darkness. They were walking in darkness. They, was, they had sat in darkness. And when he came, then they were supposed to arise because great light has come. Their light has come. So the, the Jews, the glory of God had to be seen upon them by receiving Jesus Christ. And the Gentiles, and the Gentiles shall come to the light and kings to the brightness of thy lysing. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why you'll find uh, we are talking about, uh, we'll talk about these uh, maybe again, again in our second, uh, our next service about Elijah and John the Baptist. Because these two men, they were the four learners. They are, the Bible is saying, Elijah must come. And when Jesus came, he is saying, John came in the spirit of and the power of Elijah. So you find the two who are introducing Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was introducing Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. And Elijah is supposed to introduce Jesus Christ to the Jews. Praise the name of the Lord. So you say, it, so he is coming to, to the two. The Jews and the Gentiles. And the Gentiles shall see. So when it comes to the Gentiles, uh, to the Jews, uh, then the Bible is saying in the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter and verse number 25, the Bible says, In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel, in the Lord shall all the seed of Israel 
be justified and shall glory in the Lord. It is the seed or the seed of Israel shall be justified. Or not some. All the seed of Israel shall be justified and shall glory. So he is coming for the Jews. He was to be. We are, we have just, we are following a first of scripture where it is saying, we came from the book of Luke, the second chapter and first number 32. He was a light to the Gentiles and the glory of the people, thy people, Israel. So you find the, G the Jews are justified, all the seed of Israel. They are justified, and that is for the glory. So you find the Jews, they, God leached out to them through Moses and the prophets. Through Moses and the prophets. So you find they came from Moses all the way, Genesis to Malachi. It was God leaching out to his people. But all of them, they have to look unto Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. But now, again, we see the New Testament opening and a new dispensation starting. And through Christ and the apostles, then God is leaching out to the Gentiles. So for the Jews, it is Moses and the prophets. And that is why we are built upon that foundation because they are connected. We are built upon the, the, the foundation of the prophets and the apostles, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So you'll find the gospel, both two are united. The Jews and the Gentiles are united through Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. But the Jews are justified through the law. It is through the keeping of the law. It is from Moses and the prophets. But from there, Jesus comes now uh, to the Gentiles now, and he is leeching out uh, to the Gentiles. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the 42nd chapter and verse number 6, the Bible is saying, uh, I, the Lord, have called the righteousness, in righteousness, and will hold thine hand and will keep thee. This is talking about Jesus Christ and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles now. Not now the Jews. For a light, this is now prophesying about the coming of Jesus Christ. For a light of the Gentiles. So the Jews are receiving their light and their justification are through Moses and the, 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 the prophets but connected to Jesus Christ and the, and the Gentiles, it is Christ and uh, the apostles, the gospel. Again, uh, the Bible says, uh, Isaiah the 49th chapter and verse number 6. The Bible says, uh, and he saith, Is it a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Judah and to restore, this is Jesus Christ, and to restore the preserved of Israel? So Jesus' coming was to raise up the tribes of Judah, Judah, allies. So they have been in darkness. When they were coming out of Babylon, by the close of the Old Testament, they, many of them were sitting on darkness. They were walking in darkness. They had forgotten the law of Moses. They had forgotten the word of God. They had forgotten the true worship, the Jews. So that is why Malachi is saying, and you that fear the Lord, the son of righteousness, shall arise. And now Isaiah is prophesying, he is saying, and he said, is it a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to rise up the tribes of Judah and to restore the preserved of Israel, not the Gentiles. So he had to work. Then one was to raise up and to be a light to the Jews, to connect them back to God. And then he said, and I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. So Jesus becomes the son of righteousness to all. He becomes the light of the world, both to the Jews and also to the Gentiles. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why the Jews had to receive him. But you know, when he came the first time, they never received him. But the Gentiles received him. The Gentiles, the, the Jews never received him. The Bible is saying he came to his own. 
in the book of John. We'll come back to Isaiah, the 49th chapter, the book of John, the first chapter, and first number 11. The Bible is saying he came unto his own. Now his own is the tribe of Judah, is the Israelites. He came to his own. That is why he is called the tribe, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. So he came to his own. He was coming to the Jews. But when he came, they received him not. And his own received him not. They said, away with him. Away with him. They never ac accepted him as the Messiah. They never accepted him as the light of the world. And that is why, and I thank God they refused him. I thank God they rejected him. Because when he, they rejected him, verse number 12, the Bible is saying, but as many, these are the Gentiles, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. That is you and me as Gentiles. So Jesus came for the two groups, the Jews and the Gentiles. Hallelujah. He came for the two groups to be the light. Back to Isaiah, the 49th chapter and verse number 6. He said, and he said, it is, it, it, it is a light thing that, 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 that thou should be my servant to rise, to raise up the tribes of Judah and to restore the preserved of Israel. To restore them, the Jews, to restore them to the true worship. To restore them to the law of Moses. To restore them to that which God had inaugurated. And for them to have that relationship. Covenantal relationship. That they may be called the people of God. And now when he become a light to the, gen to the Jews. Now again he turned and he said. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Hallelujah. To the light to the Gentiles. Tiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus comes and he becomes now the light both of the Jews and also the Gentiles. And I said both, both groups, the Jews and the Gentiles, Jesus has to be introduced to them by a forerunner. And that is why we have John the Baptist and we have Elijah. Praise the name of the Lord. They have to do the work. Hallelujah to our God. So you find they become, so I said, through Christ and the apostles, then the disciples, uh, which we call disciples, then these are the people that Christ, God is using to bring light to the Gentiles. And that is why we find when Apostle Paul is being raised up by God, he is empowered. He is given the message. In the, book of, in the book of Acts, the, 20, uh, the 26th chapter and verse number 18, I believe it is. Uh, the Bible is saying, verse number 17, the Bible is saying, Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. So Paul was delivered from the Gentiles and again he is sent to the Gentiles, verse number 18, to open their eyes. And to turn them from darkness. Listen to that. Darkness to light. Because before the gospel, before the preaching of the word of God, all the Gentiles were in darkness. Before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, all the Gentiles were in darkness. By the time the Old Testament is being closed, then all Jews were in darkness. And they needed a light. They needed that son of righteousness, and that is Jesus Christ. So that he can be the light of the world. Hallelujah. He can be the light of the world. And that is why when you receive the gospel, you cannot now be called that you are walking in darkness. It cannot be said you are walking in darkness anymore because you have received the light. Hallelujah. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. When you receive the gospel, when you received you, a child of God, if you have received this gospel and you have believed in Jesus Christ, you are no longer walking in darkness. And we thank God that we have received the son of righteousness. He is the son of righteousness. He illuminates. 
our way. We no longer walk or sit in darkness. Both the Jews and the Gentiles. Why? Because we have received Jesus came. And he is the son of righteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. So Paul is told to deliver and to, uh, to, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. Acts the 13th chapter and verse number 46. The Bible is saying, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. That is the Jews. Remember he came to his own and his own received him not. So Jesus was coming to the Jews. But the Jews rejected him. And when he reject, they rejected him, he turned to the Gentiles. Also to be a light to the Gentiles. It was necessary that the word of God should have first been spoken to you. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles through the gospel, through the preaching of the word of God. We turn, when we have this gospel, we are talking about even right now what I'm doing. I am releasing that light. I am releasing that gospel. Uh, we can go to the book, we'll come back here. We can go to the book of Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and verse number four. The Bible is saying, in verse number three says, if our gospel be heed, it is heed to them that are lost, verse number four. In whom? The God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light, that is the light, that is the gospel, that is the truth, lest, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So when we preach the gospel, it's like we are pre projecting a light, a glorious light. The gospel, the son of righteousness, Jesus Christ. He said, I am the light of the world. But how does he become the light of the world? Is through the preaching of the gospel. So that them that were, were walking in the darkness, them that have sat in darkness, then they are going to arise because the light, the glorious light, have shone over their lives. And they are no longer walking in darkness. So when we are preaching the gospel, uh, both uh, to the Gentiles and to the Jews, when this pro is proclaimed, then we are saying, them that have been in the legion of darkness, glorious light, great light, light has sprung up. That is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to our God, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So you find the devil can blind an individual. The devil can take away the interest of the gospel from an individual so that they can continually remain in darkness. The devil can do that. The devil can make sure that these people, they have no interest anymore. And that is what he had done to the Jews when they were coming out of Babylon. They had lost the zeal. They had lost the excitement. They had lost the interest of God and the word of God, the law, the commandment of Moses. That is why Malachi is coming and saying, remember, there's a day that is coming that will burn like an oven. And but for you that fear God, the son of righteousness shall arise. You that fear God even among the Gentiles, the son of righteousness shall arise. Praise the name of the Lord that you are not going to be condemned, but you are going to be triumphed. You are going to be a winner. You are going to be rewarded because you held on the truth. You held on the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. As a child, and that is why this gospel becomes special. The gospel becomes very important in the life of a child of God. Because it will keep on uh, illuminating in your lives. Uh, getting you out uh, from darkness to his marvelous light. Back to the book of Acts there. The, the 26th chapter and verse number 18. To open the eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. I think we were in Acts, the, the 13th chapter and verse number 47. So that the, the Lord commanded us saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles. Remember I said in the Old Testament for the Jews... 
It was Moses and the prophets that were the agents, the instruments that God used to enlighten his people. It was the instruments that God called and laced to intro, eh, 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 to lazy his people and also to enlighten them. But for the Gentiles, it is Jesus Christ and the apostles, the disciples, the preachers of the gospel. For, to, for so have the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou should be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Praise be to Jesus. So you find it is now through the preaching of the gospel, both the Jews and the Gentiles, they become a partaker of this light that illuminates. Jesus said, I am the light. We read that first of scripture. I am the light. I am the light of the world. In the book of John, the eighth chapter and verse number 12, I am the light of the world. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He is the son of righteousness. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is a child of God, both the Jews and the Gentiles that have been in darkness, then they have to arise. The Bible is saying, Ephesians, the fifth chapter and verse number 14, Ephesians 5th chapter and verse number 14, wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest. It is like you are in darkness. And there is that tendency of God's people becoming lethargy. Uh, they becoming weary, becoming tired and almost uh, giving up because they have waited. They stayed in Babylon for 70 years. And that took away and eroded the excitement and the zeal for God. And the Christians, the Gentiles, they may say the return of Jesus Christ has taken long. And in the process, they go to sleep. In the book of Matthew, that we'll come back there. In the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter and verse number 5, they were waiting for the bridegroom. The church was waiting for the bridegroom. It was a type the kingdom of God, first number one, is saying, is likened. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. We are waiting for the bridegroom, the church. We are waiting for Jesus Christ. And he delayed, first number five. The Bible is saying, and while the bridegroom tallied, they all slumbered. And slept. And that is what we are talking about darkness. People sleep in the night when there is dark. And that excitement, spiritual awakening, spiritual alertness is no longer there. People are no longer excited looking for God and waiting for God. And because again they don't meet in the church services regularly. So that, that weariness is there develops. Praise the name of the Lord. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. The church slumbered. Lethargy developed. Wailiness developed. Disappointment. You know, the, 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 it is taking longer. And before you realize, everybody is asleep. And that is why the Bible is saying in Ephesians, the fifth chapter and verse number 14, the Bible is saying that is why he is saith, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, from the dead and Christ. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you, my brother, if you are almost getting weary, my sister, if you are almost getting to a slumberland, arise, awake and Christ shall give thee light. This is the gospel, the word of God. It is going to enlighten you. It is going to remove the, 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 the drowsiness. It is going to, to remove uh, the, the wailiness. It is going to remove that feeling of uh, uh, sleepiness. Because you want to be alert, be sober. Hallelujah, as we wait. Because Jesus is the light of the world. And you cannot walk now anymore in darkness. There can never be a feeling of getting tired, of waiting. 
There cannot be that feeling of getting tired of testifying of the goodness of Jesus. Of the goodness and the greatness of his mercy and love upon our lives. Why? Because this light is always upon you. You cannot get to where you cannot stumble. You cannot get discouraged. Why? There is this light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. This is not the natural, physical death we are talking about, but it is spiritual. The spiritual deadness. Hallelujah. That which comes because of sin and because of uh, people getting fatigued. They say we have waited. And that is why this is the, the death that we are talking about in Ephesians, the second chapter and verse number one. And you who are dead, and you have he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sin, not the physical death, but the, the, that spiritual deadness. So when you have, the Bible is saying, awake you that are, have been asleep, in the sleep of this spiritual slumber, and the light will shine upon you. Jesus is the light of the world. And this is what we are using, the word of God, to illuminate your way, to lighten your way. Praise the name of the Lord. The entrance, the Bible is saying, the entrance of thy word. Psalms 1, 19th chapter, and verse 1, 30, the Bible said, the entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance, when this word enters in your heart, it gives you light. When this word of God enters, when you understand it, when you embrace it, when, when, when you imbibe it in your life and in your heart, you are no longer going to walk in darkness. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So you find when we preach the word of God, it is like we are focusing a strong, glorious light on your life. And you become awakened. You are no longer walking in darkness. Praise the name of the Lord. As a child of God, that is why Jesus is coming uh, for, for both the Gentiles and the Jews. He came for the two. I am the light of the world. Not of the Gentiles only, but also of the Jews. And that is why John the Baptist had to come as the witness. The Bible is saying he was not the light. Praise the name of the Lord. He was, John was not the light, but he was the witness of the light. Praise the name of the Lord. John came to witness about this light. He was not the light, but he was the witness of this light. Hallelujah to our God. We are talking about uh, uh, Jesus and uh, God helping me. I'll go on these uh, uh, talking about uh, Elijah and John the Baptist. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible is saying, John chapter 1 and verse number 7, then came, uh, then Sam came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe, men through John might believe, but John was witnessing of the light. Verse number 8. He was not that light. Hallelujah. John was not that light, but was sent. To bear witness of that light. And that light is the son of righteousness. It is Jesus Christ that comes to illuminate this world that was in darkness. And the people that walked in, the, in darkness, great light has sprung up. That is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So Jesus came, uh, John came to bear witness of this light to the Gentiles. Praise the name of the Lord. He, he, he was not the light, but he was him that bore witness of that light. Hallelujah. So Jesus came both to the Jews and the Gentiles. Let me read again. Mark, uh, Romans the 15th chapter and verse number 8. The Bible is saying, Mark, Romans the 15th chapter and verse number 8. Now I say that Christ was a minister of the circumcision that is the Jews the circumcision remember that the Jews for them to be called the people of God they must have had a token 
and that token was circumcision. And now Jesus was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God. To confirm the promises made unto the fathers. The promises made unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word, the law that was given unto Moses, Jesus, for the Jews, he came to confirm them. He came to confirm he was a minister. So he was, a, I'm talking about Jesus being the son of righteousness that covers the whole earth. It is not for the Gentiles only. It is not for one tribe in Kenya, but it is all the tribes in Kenya and all tongues and kindreds and over every nation, the whole world. So he became a, wit, a, a light. And I am showing you the light. He was the light. He was a minister to the Jews also. Of the circumcision for the truth of God. To confirm the promises made unto the fathers. First number nine. The Bible is saying and the Gentiles. And that the Gentiles. So it is both the Jews and also the Gentiles. Hallelujah. So he became a minister of the two. So he confirmed. He came to confirm. He came to confirm the law. He said, I don't think I have come to destroy the law. But he said, I have come to confirm it. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. The Gentiles might glorify the Lord for his mercy. Because we are saved by his mercy. We have been called by his mercy. We have been forgiven our sins because of the mercies of God. For this cause, I will confess thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. So both the Jews and the Gentiles must believe in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So he become the light. Ephesians, the, 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 the second chapter and first number 13, the Bible is saying, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, that is now the Gentiles, first number 14, for he is our peace, who have made both one. The both one is the Gentiles and the Jews. Both the circumcision and the uncircumcision. Because he became the light of, the, of both. He became the light to the Gentiles and he became the light to the Jews. For he is our peace, who have, have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between the Gentiles and the Jews, and that we they may be reconciliation thereof. First number 14, the Bible is saying, first number 15, the Bible says, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for he, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace between the Gentiles and the Jews. And I will say, I'm saying that the Old Testament was closing with the warning to the Jews. That there's a day that is coming. And this also will affect the Gentiles. That will burn like an orphan. And for the Jews, they were told, remember the law of Moses. Remember the commandments of Moses. The Gentiles, it is this word. They have to obey this word. And Jesus came as the son of righteousness to all. And I pray that as we continue preaching this gospel, that this word and this gospel will illuminate enough light upon you. That you no longer walk in darkness. You no longer sit in darkness. But you walk in the light even as he is in the light. Praise the name of all that you may be called. The children of light. Hallelujah to our God. Anybody and everybody. That have believed and have received this gospel. Then it means they have been translated. From darkness to his marvelous light. And you are no longer walking now in darkness. And Jesus. The son of righteousness. And my prayer my brother. My sister is that you may receive. This son of righteousness. That it may arise on you. And the darkness in your life will be rolled away. 
the darkness in your life will free and you'll walk in the light even as he is in the light. Both the Jews and the Gentiles, he is the light. And I pray that you may receive this light. I pray that you may receive this word. Praise the name of the Lord. That you may henceforth walk in the light and you, that you have received these, you continually walk in the light. Don't be like the Jews. When they went to Babylon, they forgot the law. They forgot and they went back into darkness. They forgot the law of Moses. They forgot the word of God. And when they came back to their country, into Jerusalem, they, the zeal they had for God, the love they had for the word of God had faded away. And that is why the last prophet is warning them. And he's saying, remember, and I'm telling you, my brother, never forget this word. Never forget the word of God, because the more you remember, the more the sun of righteousness shines upon you. And you'll no longer walk in darkness, but you'll walk in the light, even as he is in the light. He is the son of righteousness. And I pray you'll receive him. Praise the name of the Lord. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God be with you. May God's grace be over your life. And I pray that God will enlighten your eyes of understanding. May God give you this understanding that you may embrace the truth. Hallelujah to our God. That this son of righteousness may shine and continually shine upon you. And you that have uh, awake, awake, uh, if Ephesians, the fifth chapter and verse number 14. The Bible is saying, uh, them that are, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And I pray that Christ will give you light. Rise up, my brother. Sister, don't sit in darkness. Don't walk in darkness. But arise and let Christ give you this light, this gospel. Eliminate dark areas in your life. God will hold you by his hand. These gospel through Christ and the apostles and the disciples of Jesus Christ, the true preachers of the gospel, will help you to walk in this light. May God bless you. May God keep you. And I pray that you continually walk in the light. Hallelujah. Bless God. I thank God for yet another day that God has just given us to hear this word. That this continually will illuminate light in our lives. That we henceforth walk not in darkness, but we walk in the light. And if you have not received Jesus Christ, I pray that God will touch your heart. And put the love of God in your heart. That you may receive this word and you also arise from your sleep and from the darkness. And you start walking in the light. And God will give you the victory. Amen and amen. Let me close with a heart of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want to commend and commit my viewers into your hands, the listeners of this gospel. Dear Lord, I pray that the Bible is saying that these, uh, the light of the glorious gospel may shine upon them. And it is my prayer that these words we have just spoken like here, introducing Jesus Christ as the son of righteousness, may arise in their lives, O God Almighty, in their hearts, in the name of Jesus and them that have sat in the legion of darkness, let this great light light upon them, O God Almighty. Let it shine over their lives in the name of Jesus, that they may walk no more in darkness. But Father, they may walk in the light, even as Jesus is in the light, and you are in the light. Dear God, I commend them into their hands, O God Almighty. Let them walk in this pathway. Dear God, as the Bible says, that the path of the righteous is that like that light that shineth more and more unto a perfect day. Dear God, let this path of these children of God, my Father will shine more and more as we walk from earth to glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that God, they may receive you. They may accept this gospel. And they may walk in this truth, O God Almighty, that they may forget not thy word. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray, even them that I have need, Dear Father, I pray, meet with them at their very point of need, Jehovah. Dear God, provide according to thy riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, believing it shall be given unto us. And I'm asking this 
in the name of Jesus. That great glory and great grace be upon your people. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you. God keep you. Let us walk in the light. Let us continue holding on the truth. Let us never forget the word of the Lord, lest the darkness again come into our lives. But we continually hold on to the word of God that we may continue walking in this light. God bless you. God keep you till we meet again. God bless you. Amen and amen. Thank you.